Good afternoon. I hope everybody is awake today. Now, Dr. Kasliwal asking, anybody sleeping over here? Now I can say anybody not awake over here. Uh, let's talk of something which is not on left hand side. Everybody says heart is on left hand side. But let me talk of something which is not on left hand side, that's the right side of the heart. Well, I work to this particular place, that's Jirap Echo Academy, and we have a teaching experience of more than 25 years in India with the longest running hands-on training program as on today. We have almost completed 25 years now. Well, talking of RV dysfunction, it is always associated with very poor outcome, whether left side disease or right side diseases, and its accurate assessment is very important for appropriate diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis. Let's look at this slide published in January 2018. Prognostic value of right ventricular dysfunction in heart failure with reduced ejection fractions. If you have a RV GLS, which is minus 15 or more, you have a good outcome as compared to RV GLS, which is minus 15 or less. One single slide which tells you in patients with a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, we always talk of a half ref. We always talk of a four pillars of a heart failure. Do we ever look for what is the most important prognostic factor? Certainly no. This is another one patient undergoing a tower procedures. And patient who's undergoing a tower procedure, what is the survival probability of these people when they are subjected to RV free wall stain analysis? Good RV strain? good survival, poor RV stain, poor survival. And this is a very busy slide which talks of patients having a pulmonary artery hypertension with or without reduced RV GLS. If you have a reduced RV GLS, as seen on this very busy slide is, and measured not by GLS alone, just look at a tissue Doppler imaging TDI velocity, less than 9.5 versus more than 9.5. If a pH patient has got reduced TDI velocity, they have a poor outcome. Prognostic significance of RV dysfunction in present, patient presenting with acute left heart failure. Many of us patients present with acute left heart failure. And it says that if you develop an RV dysfunction or dilatation, your outcome is very poor as far as cumulative mortality is concerned or recurrent hospitalizations. Very good slide. As was the ARVC is concerned, if you look at an ARVC, RV strain is RV GLS and RV right atrial strain. Both of them, if they are significantly reduced, obviously these are the people who have got a poor outcome in ARVCs. Just published a couple of weeks back, incremental prognostic value of echocardiographic measures of right ventricular systolic function in patients with chronic heart failure. And what did it do? He took up two parameters together. One is a TAPSA and the second is a fractional area change. Look, TAPSA and fractional area change, they are normal. This is what your cumulative overall survival probability is. If both of them are decreased, look, this is your graph, goes down like this over a period of next five years. Sales says that almost 30 to 40 percent people will not survive at the end of five years. Answer is, how do we assess in 2025? We have many factors like TAPSA, RV free wall TDI, three-dimension injection fraction, fractional area change, and a GLS. Let's take one by one, one. Regional function assisted by TAPSA and RV free wall TDI. The global function assisted by evaluation by RV fractional area change, GLS, 3D ejection fraction, and myocardial performance index. If I have to do one measure, which has got a significant value, looking at a local function, and that's what, where I would like to bet on, that is TAPSA. The only factor is it becomes pseudo-normal in cases where we have a severe tricuspid regurgitation or some procedure has been done on the right side of the heart. Here's a subject who had a right atrial myxoma and subsequently endoplasmic Angloplasty ring was done on right hand side. Look at his GLS strain. The GLS strain is normal, free wall strain is normal, but TAPS is reduced. So have to be careful if you are looking for a TAPS, and this is an M mode evaluation, nothing more than that. 
and easily available even to the basic possible machines of echocardiography. Next important factor is we look at RV free wall TDI or tissue Doppler imaging. It's a pulse wave evaluations, little angle dependent as well as load dependent. <clears throat> if your angle is not correct, you are going to underestimate it. And if that is there, that is important and the normal value is more than 9.5. Anything less than 9.5 is considered as abnormal. Third important parameter is fractional area change. Believe my word, this has been doing for the left side for a long, long time. What we have been doing is ejection fraction, but since RV is a crescent shaped structure, we don't look at ejection fraction. We look at a fractional area change of RV. Just draw a line or area in end versus area in end systole, and you get a value. Anything more than 35% is considered as normal. Less than that is abnormal. Now, most important modality, which has got multiple benefits, multiple utility, not only of RV, but many other conditions. It is dependent on imaging quality of endocardium and myocardial border should be measured in focused RV review. If any one of you understand Hindi, asi jadi kuri ondi na sundar hoyi ta taaj the beautiful banasu the gorgeous banasakde ho. The imagei kharab hogi to tusi ki kar sakde ho? Kuch nahi kar sakde. Same thing happens with RV free wall stain. If the image acquired is good, you can make it beautiful and you can get a GLS. If the image is horrible you're going to get a horrible outcomes. And that's what we look forward. We look forward for RV free wall GLS or a global GLS. And multiple things which are available in a free wall GLS, the indicator, anything more than minus 20 is considered to be a very good value for a GLS. <clears throat> One word about clinical utility, and that's what we utilized during our COVID period was, here is 56-year-old male with the previous history of acute anterior MI. Look at the GLS. The apical GLS of RV stain was reduced as compared to mid and basal. And believe my word, this was truly a person who had a type 3 LED lesion. And that's what gave us a value. Look why my RV GLS is reduced in apical segments. On the contrary, in free wall MI, uniformly reduced non-dilated RV. Third important aspect of this is patient presenting with sudden onset breathlessness. And we did an apical GLS. It shows apical sparing. Mid and basal segments are reduced. And that gives you a lot of value for apical sparing as well as right hand side is concerned. An important factor is how to differentiate this from a person suffering from chronic obstructive lung disease. Same patient who has presented with acute breathlessness, if he has apical sparing, possibly embolism. If you have a uniformly reduced RV GLS, then it's possibly a chronic obstructive lung disease. Moving on to the next important factor is three dimensions ejection fractions. Like many people say we cannot buy a Mercedes as far as echo machine is concerned. We'll only buy Maruti 800, TA, T9, S50, S60, or lower end machines. But if you want to do echocardiography, you want to get the best possible outcome in ejection fractions of the uh, RV, you need to buy a machine which has got a facility for three dimensions ejection fractions. And that gives you excellent values. Look how beautiful you can look at the septal leaflet over here, anterior and posterior leaflets. And on top of that, you can get everything in this particular fashion. You look for a ejection fractions, you look for end systolic volume, you get an end diastolic volume. And that almost closely matches with MRI. Nothing less than that. And obviously the MRI is the gold standard. And if you have a facilities matching with the MRI of a gold standard, that's much better an example for it. But the problem with three-dimensional injection fraction is image acquisitions. Almost 40% of images in our lab, we are not able to calculate ejection fractions as far as 3D is concerned. Next very good important factor is myocardial performance index. Really a good measurement, which just do an RV free wall TDI. It gives you a tricuspid valve closing and opening time. 
an RV ejection time, and based on that, you just calculate a right side Michael performance, right? Any value more than 55, 0.55 is considered as normal. Anything less than that is considered as abnormal. Mind my word, I'm not using flow pattern. I'm using myocardial contraction velocities. One more important thing is TAPSI and pulmonary artery systolic pressure ratios. Very good measure for looking at pulmonary artery hypertension and gives you a lot of value about an RP. Couple of people, they always ask me this question, do we do a stress echocardiography in right side heart lesions? Well, this is one factor which makes a very good value in assessing cardiopulmonary vascular system when evaluating symptoms for dyspnea or a fatigue on exertions. And the clinician should be aware of the secondary effect of both left-sided heart disease as well as exercise hypertension in right ventricle. Many papers are published, whether it's normal subject, well-trained athlete, screening person, heart failure with reduced ejection fractions. But I can tell you one thing, when a patient present to our lab, for exceptionally history of external angina, ex ex exercise dyspnea, we always look at our right-sided pressures, we always look at our right-sided functions, and majority of time we are able to give an answer, look, this illness is coming from a right side. Next, cardiac MRI in the form of cine cardiac MRI, 4D flow, RV strain, late Gadernia enhanced scanning, myocardial T1 and ECV mapping. I'll just show you one slide. And this is one slide from a cine cardiac MRIs. Look, this gives you very good values. Difficult to have it everywhere. It's not cost effective. Many people, they do not know how to read it. And if they have the machine, they do not know how to operate the systems. And unfortunately, we do not have a cardiac cardiologist reading an MRI images. And that's what leads to inadequate optimization of this system. This is an image which talks of RV hypertrophy. This is the part which is of RV cavity. And look at the interventricular septum, which is almost flattened, tucking of our raised pulmonary artery pressures. We have a RA which is dilated, we have a significant TR jet. And this MRI gives you a lot of value. And you can't talk of anything in cardiac MRI, which is really a gold standard for looking at RV functions. The most important part is, if you look at this cardiac MRI, we can ever also get a GLS in cardiac MRIs. So many things are possible when we have this RV function evaluations. Then, of course, when nothing is confirmatory, we always look forward for a colleague like Dr. N.S. Johan is sitting over here. We ask him to do a just in right side pulmonary angiograms. Look at the pressures. Look at other things. And let's confirm the diagnosis before we take any invasive measure. So, colleagues, friends, and elders, the era is of a multimodality imaging. Assessment of right function, cost of a echocardiography, MRI, and a right heart catheterizations. Echo, everywhere is available, whether basic or advances. MRI is available, and cath is truly an available modality. But what's the future today? Are we going to talk about the same thing again and again? No, we are going to talk about three dimensions are we staying in a time to come. We are only talking of a longitudinal stain. We have to look at circumferential, sorry, radial and anteroposterior stain of the RV because these are another two stains which are equally important. I couldn't get the images loaded in my system. I can show you how the RV walks in different kind of stages, whether it's pulmonary hypertension or other things. And this is one image from a January 22 guidelines. Look how these RV, when they have a normal ejection fraction versus reduced ejection fraction, they behave in three dimensions, three strain imagings. Lastly, I would like to say that in conclusions, it is an important structure in the heart. Thou has received a stepmotherly treatment for last many years. Various studies have proved now that it has a significant contribution in the hemodynamics of the heart. Its careful evaluation is important for the patients, management, diagnosis, treatment, and everything in prognosis.
Thank you very much for your patience here. Thank you, sir, for this excellent systolic function assessment.